Have you ever heard of that Bible story of um, you know, Samson and, uh, and Delilah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Nah. Well, that's got nothing to do with what I'm doing, so... <laughs> but the jury is still out on whether getting Cummins in front of the mic helped or hindered promoting the game, considering they could barely understand him. I only just started wearing a mouth guard, um, I suppose uh, two years I played without, without wearing a mouth guard until uh, yeah, I finally got, got some, uh, I got a whack on the, on the gob and... Uh, on the what? On the, on the gob, on the, uh, on the mouth, on the, <laughs> on the laughing gear we call it. Nick White was also on hand to make sense of the situation, which was a hard task at times. You know how someone cracks a packet of Tim Tams, it's passed around the group and you sort of half slide it on, so not, not completely off, it's just half off and everyone just takes it as it goes around. And you're thinking, hang on, there's how many, how many in a pack? How many people are there? Am I going to get one? Heart starts racing, you know, because this is a big moment, they're delicious. And it comes to you and you know that you can't see anything, you have to lift off the whole packaging and there's one right at the end here. And you're the last person there. And you go, that feeling right there is nothing to do with what I saw when I went and saw Tanil on the side of the road, but she looked great. When you come into this sort of game, you, I suppose you've got to show the patience of the Dalai Lama initially. Yeah, get down there. It's, um, it's going to be a screamer. Um, and if I'm playing, I promise to uh, <laughs> have a good crack and um, maybe get a bit of meat. But it's a big promise, but um, if I'm playing. Boy, he was, uh, he was sweating like a bag of cats at a greyhound meet there before the game, but he, he managed to uh, get over for some meat. A bit of meat, Maybe hopefully offset piece, but I'll take any meat that's on offer, mate. Given talent, and I think that's what excites us the most, is getting out there and expressing ourselves. It's not the pressure of competition. You, know. you nearly got a try on that left hand side. What happened? <laughs> oh, but I've gone up and over, and mate, he had over biscuit. It was a, uh, it was, a, it wasn't enough stability there for myself. But um, no, I was busting for a bit of meat this game. It didn't seem to work out. What's your philosophy on attack with this team? End of them, basically. Um, up the guts, and then uh, yeah, swing it wide and, and uh, in the corner. And finally, um, Honey Badger, your nickname. Can you explain why? A, a badge. Um, oh, look, you know, long story short, basically uh, there's a documentary on uh, National Geographic or Animal Planet, one of them Fox bloody setups, and, um, yeah, I, I watched this, this thing, and this Honey Badger was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with a male lion, and um, I managed to... It was un underneath him, bloody on, underdog, obviously, but on his back, clawing away, one, two, and then, bloody... The, the big fella um, got his canasters clawed off and, and he trotted off around the corner and fell over and the badger gets back up and I thought, what an animal, you know, that's, bloody, that's impressive. <laughs> Thanks so much, good to meet you. Thank you very much. <laughs> How exciting is it to play in a, in a Lions series? Oh mate, um, very exciting and um, to even get a chance, even Big Sharp, he hasn't done it, he's done everything else known to me and so um, yeah, I've, if, I, if I end up getting a gig, mate, I'll be uh, going off like a cut snake. Oh, mate, what an experience, no? You know, I've, I suppose I've done sevens before, so I'm, I, I believe I can I can assist the team, and then at the same time, you know, having an experience like that, you can. Uh, Tell your grandkids when they don't care. Um, and I mean, what is the secret when, when it comes to handling snakes? Just not be too rough. Um, you know, wet your hands if you can. Just that way it, it slides better in your hand. I feel like you're making this up. You're dead right. <laughs> how busy will you be? How, how busy will I be? Huh? Well, you'll probably be as busy as a one-legged man in a bum kicking comp. <laughs> It was a bit of a shock the first couple of days, but you sort of you snap back into it, and then you just got that Indian Ocean, mate, sunset. Buddy, Sheila under your arm, what more can you want? Talk us through how you, how you planned this at the week. Oh, look, now give it here. Oh, no, there, Pop. Yeah, <laughs> clashing oh, you, all over oh, the place. Beauty. She's opened up and he's over. A bit of meat, a bit of meat under the post. Absolutely. Talk us through the facial expressions here. It looks like you've been vacuum packed. <laughs>
<laughs> what I want to know, was that, was that how the move was supposed to work, or have you just gone, I'm uh, having this? To be honest, we actually did not train that. That was just, we no. made it up on the spot, mate. Yeah, yeah, that's what no. bloody Barbar's rugby is, and that's why it's so enjoyable. Uh, I'm joined now by Nick Cummins, also known as the, uh, a.k.a. the Honey Bear, one of the best uh, uh, nicknames in all the sports. We'll get to that in a couple seconds, why they call you that. The joint is this Yaku Niku. It's like a Korean-style barbecue. They're everywhere. They're fantastic. Um, basically, you, you waltz in there, you pay your uh, 3,000 yen, which is about 30 bucks, and she's all you can eat until they kick you out after two hours um, until you've eaten too much. But um, they're very polite about how they remove you from the building, which is quite good. Pretty happy with the two tries? Oh, mate, you know, I don't want to talk about it. But, um, yeah, actually, there was two in the corner, um, one on, one down this side over here in the, in the first half there. It was bloody... Oh, it was great. Like, the, the ball popped out on, on the right here, and the, and the boys are on it like, a, like seagulls at a tip. And then they, buddy, they shifted on. I spoke to Mozer. I said, Mozer, mate, take it yourself. And, uh, and he did, and he's got wheels, so he gassed on the outside of the uh, second-last defender. All I did was just, just Johnny on the spot, right there, one catch, two steps, place ball down. It's uh, chipped over the top, regained, and then scored in the corner. So um, yeah, mate, it was it was, uh, it was good. The word on the street is, uh, you know, from hearing from the crowds, it's your tough as woodpecker lips. Uh, what would you say to that? Right, so there was the national poetry championships were taking place, and uh, there was two finalists. There was a, a bloke from University of New South Wales, and there was a country bumpkin from out west. So they had 20 seconds to come up with a poem about Timbuktu. Up first, the uni university student. Oh, he's recording. <coughs> and he goes, On the lonely desert sands, crossed a lonely caravan. Men on camels, two by two. Destination, Timbuktu. And the crowd went wild. Are you a beauty? That's bloody fantastic. 20 seconds. And then Country Bumpkin's turn, steps up to the plate. And he goes, Tim and I, off hunting went, found three girls in a pop-up tent. They were three and we were two, so I bucked one and Tim bucked two. And in terms of sort of the, the cultural side of it, has it been easy to get stuck in? Have you enjoyed different cultures? When you first turn up and you, you can't speak the language, you, you bloody find yourself trying to order some chicken, you're hovering over the table, you're bloody flapping your wings. And how hard is it? Just give me a bit of squawker, bloody whack it on the plate. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realise uh, there was a medal involved, but um, he handed me a medal. I he, it was great. He, I couldn't understand a word he said, but um, it was, um, he meant well. I know that. It's uh, one of them things, mate, you, you can't really uh, count your chickens before they hatch. Yeah, look, there's a couple of big hoolers getting about. When the start of this season turns up, the boys will be uh, you know, going off like a, like a bull in a china shop. Gentlemen, how are you guys feeling? Bloody, bloody terrific, uh, to be honest. It's a beautiful day today. Um, it's been a bit uh, windy the last couple of days, but we've got out in the jet boat, did a few 360s, and um, yeah, it's been terrific. So welcome to Big Ben, the Badger. I think we're actually waiting for the Prime Minister, who's uh, here to have a word with you. I yeah, I gave him a buzz. I gave him a buzz earlier. I said I might drop him around, you know, you know a bit of a, a couple of tins, maybe, you never know. <laughs> He's that kind of a man, actually. Are you, are you a man of politics? Are you interested in setting up the Badger party when the playing days are done? You have a hell of a following. Tell you what, I've, I've already had a couple of Badger parties. Right. Um, and Not they, necessarily in terms of running the country. Oh, hell no, but um, it's still a party and, they, yeah. and they don't, we don't muck around. Yeah, mate, oh, buddy, uh, I was like a rat up a drain pop in one of them runs there. but uh, Sweating like a gypsy with a mortgage, actually, when he, when he got up after scoring that try. You know, this time around, I was just thinking, I'm, I'm going to get out there and just go bananas. <laughs> it's still up there. <laughs> You look pretty uh, experienced handling a snake, mate. You obviously do this quite often. Yeah, this one's a bit smaller than what I'm used to, but, um, mate, same, uh, same texture. Oh, mate, you know what? It sound like I've been bloody whacked in the Niagara Falls. Sorry about that, but... Welcome to Buckingham Palace. Are you a, are you a royalist or a republican? Are you, are you pro the Queen? She, she, does, she does her best, mate, and uh, I, I don't have any bad thing to say about her. Um, She's a good bird, former flame. I don't want to, you know, say anything bad about her. Missed this whole uh, tournament, and um, mate, yeah, you should have passed it. But uh, we, uh, will you get the chance just to slip your business card into Michael Checker's pocket and just say, "Don't forget me. I will hopefully be around and, and available." Oh, big check, mate. Uh, yeah, look, you know, I'm still on the burst. If you're, uh, if you can, just have a, have a yarn to the uh, Japanese and, and get me on, get me on the burst. Come in. Bloody oath. And uh, see you, blue. We're gonna bloody kick the tires and light the fires. So. Uh, Get your jexy down, banging on a seat, and we'll uh, shake hands and tell a few stories after the game, eh? My dad always told me, he goes, son, 
he's up every now. He goes, and if you don't know what to say, don't know how to answer it, just tell him what you did in the holidays. So here they are. So now, the 20, 37th minute, uh, there was a change of play, and how do you feel that impacted the bloody result of the game? And I'm like, holidays. <laughs> Where were we? <laughs> and you just tell them a story, mate, because at the end of the day, people don't give a rat's about the question or the answer. They just want to be entertained by a story. Exactly right. <laughs>